Good morning YouTube and the internet. Welcome to this week's episode of I Hate My Life, I Hate You, I Hate My Car and I Hate Motorsports. So those of you who um, are past subscribers will notice that I'm standing in a very different place. Um, you'll also know that I've only uploaded one video in a year. Uh, for the Gold Rush Hill Climb, if you didn't watch that, go watch the Gold Rush Hill Climb videos. They shouldn't be too far down the list, because that's all I uploaded last year. Um, I bought a house. So, the last 12 months, well, prior to this year, um, I took a job FIFO, uh, working in Central Australia, massive project, uh, billion dollar job, and spent nine months basically flying in and out of the desert in South Australia. Um, really good money set me up to buy a house. I bought this house because of this shed. Since then, um, so I bought the house in February, moved in in March, but I also started a new job in December last year, which is Brisbane based, so I could get back into racing and be here to do stuff. Um, but it's just been flat out, so basically all the stuff in my shed. I also moved on the weekend where Brisbane saw its second biggest flooding in like 20 years, uh, maybe even more. And so uh, my old shed was actually underwater. Well, my yard was underwater. I couldn't drive the car in the backyard. I actually got bogged uh, attempting to retrieve some stuff out of the shed. So it was a big drama. Moving took a lot longer. I moved in the rain. It was awful. So basically everything just got thrown in here. And it looked pretty much like that, minus I've fished out a few things for jack nuts. Um, I had to find a few items, bits and bobs. But yeah, this is my new shed. And um, if you saw the video I put up uh, on Saturday afternoon, after jack nuts, you'll know it's, <laughs> it's going to get a lot of use. So, um, obviously the car ran at the hill climb just fine. Uh, won my class, it was great last year. And in effect, it's pretty much sat, um, you know, run up, whatever, but it effectively sat since then. Drove on and off the trailer to move and things like that, no worries. Um, went to Japanats yesterday and, um, yeah, it was um, not a good day. Um, but despite it not being a great day, it, um, you know, I'll show you what I've got. So, first session... Uh, I did what I always tend to do at QR, and I overdrove the car, uh, not a surprise, tyre temps aren't right, tyre pressures aren't right, the car's not going to have optimal grip anyway, I have had a quick manual timing of the laps because my transponder wasn't working for the first session either, there's nothing special there uh, as far as lap times, and I, I wasn't expecting there to be either, so no big surprise. Um, but I might as well show you the first session now.
first session out of the way. Bit of a moment there into turn three on one of the laps, but uh, that was me sort of trying to find the braking limits in about the safest place to do so on that layout. Because if you overcook into turn three, you could just shoot straight, kill a cone, whatever. You can just go straight down that back straight and there's no harm done. So um, that's where I like to really push my limits and find the limit and go over the limit to see where it is, um, then I can use that data that I learned from that in turn six um, and optimize turn six, which gives me the run on the main straight. Uh, so the big difference from last time, five years ago when I ran the car, is uh, last time I ran there, I had seven year old semi-slicks. These are nine month old semi-slicks, which were brand new at the hill climb last year. So the group level difference was just night and day. Um, but again, the first session, the tyres you know, started at 27 pound or whatever. They were 40 pound at the end of the session, so way over pressured, so no grip. Um, but the second session was where you know the tyres were going to start to go. So to make sure I didn't overcook the tyres early, I did the outlap, um, and then I did like an 80%, 85% uh, just clean lap. Uh, not pushing that hard on the exits or mid corners uh, or even on the braking zones just feeling the grip of the car generally and then got ready to do a push lap and you're going to see what happens on that first push lap um, the the first lap that 80 percent lap um, is within half a second of the fastest time i ran five years ago so i don't know what times i could have produced but seconds faster several seconds faster would be the answer um but yeah here it is now if you didn't see the last video or you want to see what happened either side of that video um this is for you
So ultimately, from what I can tell, um, it just ripped all the teeth off fifth gear. Um, don't know why, don't know how, don't know if there was a pre-existing fault. That box, it's a 25 DUT box that was freshly rebuilt five events ago. So when the previous engine went in that car, the one that I launched last time I was a QR in this car, um, that engine was three events old, uh, that gearbox was three events old at that point. Um, apart from changing the clutch when I did the engine, there's been no other changes to the driveline. And 380 horsepower should be good. Uh, I have been talking to some people, um, Andrew Hawkins messaged him, and there's a lot of, yeah, theorising about um, the massive torque number I've got on my dyno sheet, and basically, yeah, having that much power at that mid-range, uh, which is where I think I am, at about 5,000, 4, 4 to 5,000 RPM in the rev range, when it happens, uh, just might have been just too much for that box um, strange to do it in fifth and not third third usually, usually goes and I'm pretty uh, gentle on it in the actual shift so yeah, it is what it is I've got to pull this box apart see what the failure actually was see if there's an inherent cause but it looks like I'll be looking at an upgrade slash change slash swap slash something um, the likelihood of a standard box doing it again depending on what I see inside it when I pull it apart uh, it's probably too high to not invest now on you know doing the right thing and getting a better box of some description exactly what that is is yet to be determined I've got some ideas um, none of them are cheap <laughs> and I just bought a house so <laughs> all my money went into that um, so well, I'll definitely be pulling the box out and inspecting it before pulling the trigger and spending many thousands of dollars. Um, I also need to ensure that I can acquire many thousands of dollars of, of free money, which is um, it's not that easy. <laughs> um, but uh, ultimately, I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, planning, you know, I was going to have the, sort of the comeback videos, this event, win my class, have a crack at the top 10 shootout and then see what events we're on at the rest of the year and carry on from there and make a heap of videos again but uh, this is going to slow me down and impact me somewhat but hang around, I am coming there's still the Mini, uh, I know exactly what I'm doing with that uh, the Falcon needs some work and the 300ZX is hidden behind that roll cab down there it's due for a birthday but obviously it's sort of lower on my priorities list plenty of cars and content to come, it's just a case of finding the time and now money um, to do it, uh, but I'll keep going, I'll keep soldiering on and um, we'll see where we end up, but for now I hope to see you in the next one and not too soon, probably after I drop that box out.